Um, but I have been on a Zoom with Gloria Stefan. I will tell you that. My mom is friends with her husband. Mm. That's cool. So you've like met her and met her? Yeah. So my mom and her husband were on the National Museum of the American Latino. So they're okay. working to build a Smithsonian. Oh, great. There's like 13 or 14 commissioners working on this project. Um, and a couple of years back, my mom took me on one of the commissioner trips to Miami. So we get there and it's like, bang, bang, bang. Like we're there four days. It's nonstop, like meetings, going to events. And I was always her plus one. So one day I was like, are we turning onto Star Island? Oh my God. I think we're turning onto Star. And I'm like, I'm going to Gloria Stefan's house. Like I knew immediately. Oh my God. So we pull up, gates open. There's incense lining their driveway. We have several waiters with, uh, various options oh of God. welcome beverage. There was a mariachi band playing. And we get to the back and Emilio Estefan is the bartender. And the whole time, my little gay self is like, like little gay Latino self is like, where is yeah. Gloria? Like an hour in the party, you could feel it changed. And Gloria comes out. My mom tells the most embarrassing story when I was little, my brother used to tell me that Rhythm was a monster and that Gloria Stefan was the monster <laughs> lady because the Rhythm oh, was going to so get funny. you. So my mom tells her the story and I was, I immediately, I blush over everything. So I'm like immediately blushing and sweating and like stuttering all over myself. Um, and she like spends the rest of the party like coming up behind me going, ooh, ooh, <laughs> oh, no, no. ooh. Oh, like the whole party. That's so funny. So nice. You had a running inside joke with Gloria Stefan. <laughs> For one night. Bienvenidos. Gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. Estoy tan feliz de que estés aquí. Yo soy tu anfitrión David Ariel Correa García Santiago Medina Sayas Reyes. What did I say? Yo, hey, what's up? Thanks for coming by. Tonight's guest inspired me to break out the old Spanish because she's working on a show that makes me think of my grandma and really think about how cool Latinos really are. I mean, the food, the music, summer tans, Gloria Stefan, Ricky Martin, Walter Mercado, Vanna White. Yeah, Vanna White. We are everywhere. I am really excited for tonight's show. So let's kick it off. Uh, my next guest and I go way back. She was a character in my TV theme wedding. She came in clutch for me to write scripts for an EGOT I was working with. She's writing quippy comebacks for her own EGOT right now. She's taking it one day at a time in the writing room for a show that makes me want to grab a plate of my dad's rice and beans, a cafe bustelo, and a rosary to tune in. Please welcome my friend, the hilariously talented Allison Wong. Oh my gosh, hi! Hi! Hi, hi David! Hi. So good to see you! I'm so excited that we're doing this. Well, I mean, now I think is the perfect time for you to give us the run-through on you. Great. Here it is. I'm Allison Wong. I am not Allie Wong. Um, and I am a writer. I've spent most of my adult life in doing comedy and performance and writing in that genre. Um, and I'm currently a writer on um, a show called One Day at a Time. And um, I have a dog named Jodie Foster, and she is the love of my life. Um, and that's that's about the most important things you need to know from, from me. You and I go way back. Um, you are really good friends with the husband. Mm -hmm. You were in our wedding. I was, and it was so awesome. Except I have to tell you one thing that um, I messed up at your wedding was I got fitted for my dress when I lived in New York, and then I moved to L.A. before the wedding. And I didn't realize that I was going to put on like a gazillion pounds when I moved to L.A. So 
I was in a dress that was two sizes too small at your wedding. At the wedding? At your wedding. No. And I remember it was like the best wedding, but I do remember having one moment where I was just sitting next to like a plate of lobster ravioli being like, I can't breathe at all. (laughs) But this is so fun. But it was like the best matching suit wedding I've been to, like top to bottom. The shoes, the costume changes, it was all impeccable. It was quite a show. Thanks. I I love a good event planning moment. You really, you shined. Thanks. It was fun. And it was TV themed, which clearly is my whole life. It was. It was, which obviously works for both of us. Mm Mm-hmm. Speaking of TV themes and weddings and TV and the whole shebang bang dig, I know that you like shows that happen have a lot to do with weddings in reality TV. I think what it is is I have I like shows where people um, make really bad decisions, Hmm. and they all seem to center around getting married, which I'm like down for. So there's like, you know, getting out of prison, you've got to get married. Coming to the country, got to get married. Um, haven't met you before, got to get married. <laughs> it's um, it's really quite the premise. Now that you mention it, I didn't actually really realize it was so marriage focused. But- they are some of my favorite too. I love them. I think it's because I don't have to feel as badly about like anything that's going on in my own life. I'm yeah. just like, at least I'm not. There. I think it's like at least my relationship isn't ruining my existence. Let's play a game. Okay, great. Let's play a game right at the top. Let's play. This one's called 90 Second Bridesmaids. Perfect. Perfect. So you have 90 seconds to come up with a list of bridesmaids mm-hmm. for your own way. Mm-hmm. Um, they should all be reality TV shows. Okay, great. Okay, great. You ready? Mm. Set, go. First, I think I would take Angela from 90 Day Fiance, but only because I feel like she would put on a show if there were no show to see. You know, like she would never leave me bored, which I appreciate for a bachelorette. Now, a I'd say I'd also switch gears and maybe do Christine from Selling Sunset um, because, uh, well, she's also a show, and I think those two shows would be great together. Um, And, gosh, maybe Chriselle from Selling Sunset as well, but that just is because I find her attractive, which is probably not good in a bridesmaid. Probably the opposite of what you're looking for for that position. Um, and, uh, I would also have to ask, uh, Big Ed to join us from, um, 90 Day Fiance as well, because he, he's not going to be my bridesmaid necessarily, but I just, I just want to chat. I want to see what's happening with him because he's a mess. And, uh, and I think, I think I need to figure that out. Let's see how much more, one more. Okay. Oh boy. Uh... I guess I'll have to go with uh, Heather Dubrow because she's my all-time favorite OC housewife. She's so chill. She's so down to earth. We'd party. It'd be chill. Perfect. I think that that would be a really weird party. That would be a extremely weird party. I would... Mm -hmm. I'd be worried for your wedding with the whole Chriselle... uh, Yeah. Christine thing. Yeah, she's a nightmare. They're together, but that's... Wouldn't that be fun? If Angela gets boring, we'll just hop into some of that drama. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that you watched Selling Sunset. I love that show. I watch everything now. I, you know, there's nothing else to do. And I find that I'm really intrigued by uh, reality TV. I watch it more than I watch any other kind. It's so funny because when I start to watch a reality TV show, and now I'm not going to lie and say I don't like them because I, I do like them. But when I start to watch them, I'm like, oh, it's the same thing. But then like mm-hmm. three episodes in, I'm screaming at him. And I'm like, I, I'm on Team Chris Shell. I'm not Team Christine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know. And it's crazy because I'll be like, I watch Million Dollar Listing LA. Okay, that's the same shit. I'm literally looking at the same houses. 
but it's like, oh, there's a different group of people showing them. I guess I'll tune in. <laughs> I guess I gotta watch it. They're addictive. Or like, Love is Blind is pretty much the same thing as Married at yeah. First Sight. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, they talk first. That's different. <laughs> Yeah, Selling Sunset is great because it um, shows me that I, I'm because I live in LA, so I'm like, oh, that that house is only like 2.5. That's amazing. Yeah, I can grab that 2.5, no big deal. But then I'm like, wait a minute, where the fuck is the 2.5? <laughs> what the hell am I talking? Because like it seems like, oh yeah, that's a good deal. But like, there's absolutely, I have no options to spend 2.5 million dollars on anything. We Welcome. were we did something similar the other day. We were walking by a, a place that had listings in the window, and it was like this like house that was like not even detached in the middle of nowhere, Jersey City, New Jersey, not near a train. There's not a view in sight, no backyard, and it was no, like no. one point seven. That's crazy. And I was like, oh, you, you're telling me I can city? go to L.A. hang out with Chriselle. And get like this crazy house. You for can 2. get more 5. for your money out here. I will say, even rental market, you'll get more for your money. <sighs> it's still the most expensive. It's still the same amount of expensive, mm. but you'll just get more. It's a, it's a crazy, it's a crazy. But thing. you know, it's all a racket because you could go to Wisconsin and get the state. <laughs> you could, but then what do you do? You know, nothing. God fuck, I don't know. Are you watching? Not are you watching Dancing out. with the Stars? Um, I am, but yeah, so Justina is killing it on Killing it. Are you going to incorporate any like dancing in the show in the future? Well, if we get to make more, I absolutely am sure we will. So again, you should watch it. It is, it's literally laugh out loud funny. I appreciate that. I have at least one joke (laughs) in every episode. You need to like text me and let me know what the joke is. So that way. I well, my, my girlfriend's very done with that. Because every time we watch it, I'm like, eh, eh, that's nice, that's nice. Just, I can't even hear it. I can't hear it. Because it's talking. So, you know, it'll get old. But I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, well, I'm just happy that Carol Baskin is off the show. Yeah, that was a nightmare. You know, we were watching it, and I was like, this is funny and all, but she may have killed her husband. What are we going to do? What are we doing about that? Correct. She... She should not be on the dance floor. She should be in jail. Yeah, that's like, yeah, I was like, isn't she like a suspect in a murder? Yeah. That's like having Stephen Avery on Dancing with the Stars. Yes. Like, <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure he did that shit. It's, so, no. It's not okay. It's not okay. Not okay. Well, that brings me to another game. Okay, great. Let's play okay. Love or Lockup. I love this game already. So, in this game, I'm going to give you a list of people, shows, and you have to tell me if you love them or you want to throw the, lock them up, throw away the key, and say adios. Can do. All right. Let's kick it off with Ramona Singer. Got to go. I f- I'm sorry, but I fucking hate Ramona. I have a, like, she is the absolute pet peeve type person for me, though. The, the person who's like, I'm crazy and I'm insane and I like totally own it about myself. So everybody else has got to like totally deal with it. And I'm like, no, you can change your personality. Yeah. You can't just be like, I'm bad. I'm a bad person. No, you change your personality. Yeah. That's what you do when you're a bad person. So for Ramona, she can go. How about Denise Richards? I'm conflicted with Denise because when I was teased with this lesbian storyline of the season of her and Brandy, I was like, I'm in. I'm in, BH. You got me again. Because you always are boring as hell, but for some reason I watch it. (laughs) And again, it's boring as hell. They don't even talk about it. It's like like we're going over whether she texted her. I'm like, that's not what I give a shit about. I want to go over what they did, scene by scene, minute by minute, frame by frame. I mean, Brandy kind of went there. I guess, but Brandy's like so trashy that I'm just like, ugh, that's not even sexy when you say it. <laughs> You're actually sad in my fucking face. <laughs> I'm like, what? Ew. Ew. 
Oh, she's, she's so, so gross. gross. She's so like, gross. She's so gross. Like, even if I met, even if I uh, met her and she was like, "I'm ready to fuck me," I'd be like, Ugh. "No, <laughs> no." Um. So Denise Richards, though, I have always thought that she was very um attractive. So I was like, "Let's talk about the storyline," but she really didn't get into it. So Freddie gotta go. Gotta go. Bye, bitch. Bye, Denise. Let's talk about the show. Let's talk about the show. So, how did you land the gig at One Day at a Time? Good question. Um, it's a crazy story, actually. So, One Day at a Time was currently canceled on Netflix. And then this whole crazy thing happened with the Writers Guild, um, where they all had to fire their agents. Because there was a conflict between the two unions. So this is a really long story. So because that happened, um, the Writers Guild started this hashtag on Twitter to help their writers get hired because nobody had an agent. So all the showrunners were like beta commitment. Yeah, we'll we'll look at this hashtag and, you know, we'll use it to try and staff people on our shows. But I wasn't in the union at the time, but I just jumped on the hashtag anyway. And I was like, oh, hi, I'm like. Chinese, American, LGBT, writer from UCB, all that bullshit, right? And then um, the uh, showrunner from One Day at a Time actually clicked on my tweet. And he looked at my website. And then he sent me an email and asked for my writing sample. And then I sent him my writing sample. And he said he liked it. And then he called me in for a meeting. But it was not for One Day at a Time. It was for a different show. Because one day at a time was canceled. So he had this like pilot that was on CBS that was like being picked up at CBS or whatever. And I was interviewing for that show. And he was like, you're great. We love you, blah, blah, blah. The next day he was like, actually, that show's not going forward. So, so sorry. Nice to meet you. And I was like, yeah, that fucking sucks, bro. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Like the one time I meet a showrunner, you know, just crazily off Twitter and it doesn't happen. And then... And then a month later, One Day at a Time got picked up again. And then I emailed him just like, hey, congratulations. He emailed me back right away and was like, hey, can you come in and meet with Gloria? Uh, And then I did. And then they hired me for this show. And that's how I got this job. So tell us about the episode you were um, lead writer on. Is that what you call it? Uh, Yeah. So, okay, well, sort of. So um, my episode is called Perfect. Um, so basically, we all together as a room, I mean, the two showrunners are the main writers. Um, and then we as the support staff writers, like help them sort of map out the season and then they divide up the episodes. Um, and then they assign the episode to different writers to write to be written by that person. So that writer writes the first draft of it. And then um and then we put it through the room and we all sort of punch it up together. So it's a very, you know, community driven thing. But the episode I was put in charge of, perfect, um, is an episode about the son, Alex, um, and how he feels pressure because he comes from a family of such strong, independent women. Um, and so he feels pressure to do really well at stuff and he starts taking a fashion class and he's not very good at it that's the that's the story it's i love alex he's so cute he's such a cute he's so so cute he's so funny i mean they're all really really funny he is so good like he really he gets it like his timing is great he's got like really good instincts he's really professional He's going to go far, that kid. I don't think he does my name, but I think he's going to go this far. <laughs> he's, like, done this to me before. Like, okay. How does that work as a writer? Do you look at previous scripts and kind of, like, find intonation mm-hmm. and rhythm for the characters? Yeah, so you sort of have to kind of pick it up as you go. So, like, when you write the outline of the episode is, like, really the first time that you're, like, okay, you're, like, responsible for writing the voice of this show and, like, knowing how to do it. So, and then, you know, you got to turn it in to the showrunners and then they work with you on it. So 
it was sort of like feeling it out. I remember writing a few jokes in my outline that they were like, so this really isn't like us. And I'm like, no, okay, of course. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, uh, uh. But, uh, you know, it's just like, you just have to get used to it. But then by the end, I was like, you know, yeah. it's pop. It's all good. But in the beginning, kind of like have to feel it out. And I was so lucky that they were nice about it. You know, like they were really welcoming showrunners. They knew that we had never, me and like four other writers had never worked on a show before. So like, they were really helpful. It's good that they're like oh, a, yeah. seemed like a chill group of people that they like. That's just really want people to do good. What they wanted, they just wanted us to do good. Well, I mm-hmm. I needed to continue because I love it and I literally cackle, laugh. At, it's literally laugh out loud funny from episode one of season one. Thanks. It's really good. So yeah, they're everyone needs to tune in. They really, you know, they did they did a good job, and I think it's great. And I, you know, it's definitely got. It's got a potential future. We just all need to keep keep pushing for it. Keep watching, keep watching. it. If you know any Nielsen viewers, get them to watch it. Okay. We'll work on it. We'll find them. They're important. So let's play another game. We'll then. find some. Okay, great. This one's called... Let's play another game. One Gay at a Time. So I'm going to give you uh, a list of roles. And you have to cast them mm-hmm. with well-known LGBTQIA+. Celebrities. They could be actors, they could not, yes. whatever you feel. Um, so I'll give you just general synopsis of the role, and then you just plop someone in there. All right, let's start with the lead, attractive and longing for love in the big city. Okay, um, so I think the, what's the guy, Matt Bomber, he is just the handsomest fella. Very adorable. You know, he's a real, real handsome guy. And I'm just like, that's a leading man. He happens to be gay. But boy, is he attractive. Maybe I'm and not gay. That's, that's right there in the role distrib- description. Attractive. See? I thought there about you it. Go. He's attractive. All right. So Matt Bomber, the sidekick, the wacky best friend in the comic relief. The wacky best friend. See, now this is tough because I feel like a lot of gay characters are subjected to just being the wacky best friend. So there's actually a lot that would be great at this. Wanda Sykes, Billy Porter. Uh, that's kind of it. Ellen. Jesse Tyler Ferguson. So there's a lot, you know, um, but I'm going to go with Wanda Sykes. because She's my favorite. Uh, Wanda and Matt Bomber would be really <laughs> funny to see together. They're best friends. They went how did to that happen? Together. You know how it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, she was the professor. Yeah. Um, all right. The elder. So you can think Sophia mm. or you can think Lydia from Ooh. One Day at a Time. Ooh, who's a good Lydia? A gay Lydia. Gay Lydia. I kind of... Ooh, that's a good question. I kind of want to go with Chaz Bono. (laughs) I don't know why. I feel like Chaz is wise. Chaz offers wise eyes. Chaz has wise eyes. Okay. Um, And then the inevitable love interest. Mm. Mm -mm. We all want them to be together. We all want them to be together. You know what? I want to say Jonathan Van Ness. Because I think he is so cute and adorable. And he and Matt Bomber would be real cute. Cute little gay couple. I would love that. That'd be cute. I didn't even think about that. That would be adorable. Because Matt is like super, super handsome, but kind of like. Yeah. Yeah. Jonathan Van Ness is like cute and fun. Tell us, what's it like working with Rita? Rita is so Rita Moreno. She's exactly what you would want Rita Moreno to be. She is really energetic, which is great. She's also, like, you know, kind of a diva, which is great, too. Uh Um, But, like, she also, like, just waits in the lunch line with everybody else, you know. She'll wait her turn and then, like, go through and get her little tongs and do the thing you know just like everybody else and then she, i mean she'll tell anybody that she's 80 fucking eight she's like i am 80 fucking eight and i'm like i know bitch you told me yesterday 
<laughs> but and then she'll like she'll oh she loves talking about West Side Story and how like in the lunch line I've heard her tell the story is that like you know when on West Side Story I had to eat by myself because I was the only actual Puerto Rican one and we were, everyone's like oh my gosh it's just amazing what a time that must have been and I'm like that's crazy you were like living in a period piece but you didn't even know it I everything you're telling me is it's a lot for my little heart to handle she's everything you'd want her to be oh thank god and when I'm... this is all over you can come out to Los Angeles and come see her in the tape you don't even know what that would do to me like I can that... I can arrange it it would, it would, I wouldn't even know. I'm, I'm feeling verklempt right now. I don't even know. I'm, I'm stuttering. And then I'm... after, after we film, you, you as my guest would come down on the floor and meet her. This is all in a very, um, you know, alternate universe where there is no COVID and everything is wonderful. I need and we COVID to be over. More, we also have more seasons being ordered, but. Well, um, we're going to make sure you have more seasons. Now, now you we have, have to make sure you have more seasons. I'm telling everyone to watch the show selfishly because I need to meet her. This is your best shot. I'm telling you right now. Oh, my God. This is I all you got. I mean, Puerto okay. Ricans have, have, have special people in our lives, and she is literally the queen. She deserves it. She is so incredible. Just so incredible. Like, you know, I didn't. I would say I knew everything about her before I started the show, but like just no, like meeting her and then doing research on like everything that she's done is like so incredible, you, incredible. Um, are clearly doing big things. So congratulations! I am gonna absolutely support you Me in everything too. that you do. Continue to watch. Um, I everyone should watch one day at a time. It's an amazing show no, and it cannot please. go away. No, we need more. I love it. I need a job. Do it for Rita Moreno. Please. That's all she wants from you. I am so jealous that she gets to work with Rita Moreno on a regular basis. I need this COVID thing to be over so I could get over there and hang out with them. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you had a good time. Please continue to watch. And continue to watch One Day at a Time on CBS. Do it for Rita. Do it for Latinos everywhere. Do it for Cafe Bustelo. Come back, hang out with us here at the run through next week. Otherwise, you got some splaining to do. Bye.